Hey everyone, welcome to the channel where we are discussing logic app integrations in detail. So far in our previous videos, we have discussed how do you create our different configurations within the logic app to define your integration workflow. In our previous demonstration, we have defined the workflows from the Azure portal directly. But what if you would like to create the workflow right there from the Visual Studio code or any ID tool? So which ID tool we should be able to use to define the logic app workflow in the offline mode rather than connecting to the Azure portal and defining it right there from the portal itself. So in today's demonstration, I'll give you a walkthrough to create a logic app workflow from the Visual Studio Code. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and you're watching Be A Learner. Okay, to create the logic app from the Visual Studio Code, of course, I need a Visual Studio instance. And as we are defining the logic app in the offline mode, I do not have any dependencies on my Azure portal or anything related to Azure. So first of all, you open the logic app, you open the folder or create a workspace in your Visual Studio Code. I have already opened a logic app dash VH code folder in this particular Visual Studio Code instance. As you can see that the folder is currently empty. You can also create a workspace on that particular folder or you can convert a folder into a workspace and then work on that if you wish to. That also supported in, in order to create a workflow. Now there are a couple of things it needs to have on your system such as you need to have number of extensions needs to be installed. For example, your Visual Studio Code should have extension or your workstation should have the extension to run the Azure function on your machine because the logic apps are usually works under the same Azure function integrated runtime to provide the offline working functionality. Now to create a logic app workflow, you need another in extension, which is this one, Azure extension. So if you go to the extension, search for the Azure, I have number of the number of extension. One of them is Azure function extension, as I mentioned, and the other one is the Azure tool extension, which I have installed here. So once you install that, you would find that this is the Azure extension. Currently, I have not logged into any of my Azure subscription, but without that, I can simply create a project by clicking here on the top left button. If you would like to expand or create a new workflow, you can create a new workflow onto existing project by clicking here. If you would like to publish or deploy your logic app, you can click here and deploy the workflow. I would have a separate demonstration to show you how do you deploy the logic app right here from the Visual Studio Code. Now, apart from that, if you would like to export this particular logic app as a deployed package, you can click here on this particular button to export the package. As we are here to create a new project and create a logic app from the Visual Studio Code itself, I'll click here the way on the very first button, create project. This will ask you to select the folder in which you would like to create this particular project. So currently I'll select the same folder which we have opened in this Visual Studio instance. So I'll select, this is the folder. Now, next thing it, it will ask you to select the workflow type, which you would like to create in, in this Logic App project. So there are two options, stateless and stateful workflow. So I'm going to select the first option, which is the stateful workflow, because I want to create a stateful workflow. Next, it will ask to provide the name of your stateful workflow. I can give it any name. So let's create a workflow or the demo workflow press enter and that is going to create a logic app project in the three step process as you can see from the bottom right section so it's creating a standard logic app i missed to tell you that this offline mode of the logic app is only possible to be created from visual studio code if you are creating a logic app project, which is of type standard. So any consumption based logic app is not going to be available from the Visual Studio Code because the workflow in the consumption based logic app will be part of your infrastructure as code and that will be deployed from the infrastructure logic app infrastructure part itself. 
Whereas in this case, you can deploy or create a infrastructure as a separate and the workflow deployment can be a separate activity. And that is that can be managed from the Visual Studio code. So as you can see that we have quite a number of folders created. So a very first folder is dot VS code folder, which is the supported supporting folder in the Visual Studio code, which would provide a support to my logic app project, which I have created. We'll go into the detail of this particular folder in a while. After that, I have an artifact folder. And in that artifact, we have a map and a schema in case if our logic app requires certain number of artifacts such as the XSLT map or integration map or maybe a liquid map, those map or schema I can define here in this particular artifact folder. Next, we have the workflow name, which is the name of the workflow which we have given while creating the project. So this is a workflow folder name, uh, which defines the name of your workflow. And then you would have the JSON, which is a workflow JSON, which comes with the default schema definition. After that, we have certain number of function ignore file dot ignore file, which has the list of uh, ignore git ignore kind of a configuration, which says that you need to ignore the dot debug dot git star dot vs code and local setting and all those files basically. Next, you have the host dot json file basically to define or to run your logic app as from the host configuration. So anything you would like to configure in your logic app host that you can define it here in the host.json. For example, if you would like to define or set the concurrency of your for each loop, or if you would like to set the concurrency or the configuration of your service bus message, which, ne which needs to be pulled in by the boy will logic app project, then you can define all those configuration in the host.json file, which unfortunately is not available directly from the Azure portal, though you can define and manage the host.json from the Kudu console, which will look into a separate video. But if you are working on an offline project, then you have full control to manage the host.json right here from this particular section. Next, you have the local settings.json. This is the same local settings.json which you will get it when you create a Azure function project in Visual Studio Code or VS Code. In this lo local settings.json, we have two settings at the moment, which says that Azure Web Job Storage Setting, which means that it is going to, and, and the value we have is use development storage true, which means it is going to use the storage emulator, which is running on my local machine to run the logic app as an emulator. Okay, and next I have a function worker runtime and which is going to be at, uh, in this case, it is type as a node type. Okay, now what does it mean that in order to run this logic app, which runs under the Azure function uh, space, I need to have this storage emulator and uh, I need to make sure that before I run or uh, before I start running this logic app on my local machine, I need to have this storage emulator running on my machine, which I'll come back to this later on. Okay. Now, if I expand the Visual Studio Code project, you can see that we have certain number at the extensions dot JSON, uh, which has the value of the Azure function extension, which we are using. We have the launch JSON file, uh, which has again a certain number of process ID, which it is basically going to pick up at the time of uh, running this function. Then we have some certain settings. Uh, it is the similar setting what we can find on the Azure portal. For example, what is your uh, project runtime, which is a version four, what kind of language uh, we are building. Uh, it's a, by default language is given as a JavaScript. And is this Azure function dot suppress project? Is it going to be true or false? Okay, I do not have much of the detail about this, but this is a default configuration. So you don't want to change this. And after that, we have number of tasks which are being configured with this particular project. So again, this is a default setting. But if you have multiple logic app project, which you would like to run, then what you can do is you can define the number of tasks here. And those, with the help of those tasks, you would be able to run the parallel Azure function instance or the one Azure function or one logic app instance in the same machine. So that is what you can manage it from this particular task section. Now, coming back to the workflow section, which is which is what we are interested in to define our workflow from our local machine. 
so this is the workflow.json now if you would uh, to design this workflow extension or uh, to design this workflow from your Visual Studio code you need to install the logic app standard extension so this is the extension which I have it I have already installed so this is what you need to install to configure your workflows from the Visual Studio code now once you have this extension you can right click on the workflow you you will get number of option for example you will get option to overview uh, to check the history of your log logic app runs you can get a designer overview uh, to open the designer of your workflow I'll click here on this particular designer and as you can see from the right top bottom right side it says it might take a moment to open the designer which is okay for the first time as we are opening it for the first time it will take a little bit time to open the workflow I'll wait for that so when you open the workflow it asks you two things uh, which connector you would like to use do you want to use the connector from your azure portal or you would like to use a uh, or you would like to skip the connector for now so i'll choose the option skip for now now you can see that the workflow is open and the very first thing it has got is the choose an operation which means that i need to define a trigger which is a very first entry point for any logic app workflow so for this demonstration what we are going to do is we are going to define a simplest workflow trigger type which is a http trigger type so i'll use the http trigger connector and i have a trigger type when the http request receive uh, i'm not going to define any schema so i'll keep the http request for to receive for any schema for now next step i'm going to use a compose operator uh, or the compose connector which is a data operation part of it I'll use the connector for this and i'll say that whatever body parameter will reuse uh, or receive from the http receive part will basically take this as a compose operator so you can use any connector what you can uh, you will find it on the azure portal almost all the connector will be available right here in this particular offline mode now what if there are connector which requires uh, some kind of a connector to be configured for example uh, service bus connector I take an example let's say if I would like to pass the entire HTTP request body as in service bus message then what do I do to do that let's say if I select the service bus connector it will ask me to specify the connector so I'll say send a message to a queue before I do that obviously it's going to ask me to create a connector as this was a built-in type of connector so I need to specify the detail of the built-in connector so I'll give it a name of service bus connection which is this one uh, authentication type I can choose the type as in connect connection string for this demonstration I'll open my service bus connect uh, connection string I'll provide the value of the connection string here so that I can create a connector and the connection is created successfully I'll I need to provide the name of the queue so I'll use the name of the queue as in test uh, which is the na na name of the queue uh, which is the queue where I would like to post the message now to post a message what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the content option and then within the content let me see that I need to use the compose body operator okay so once that is done i need to respond back to this http saying that okay i have done my job and everything is looking fine and i will say response status code is true and here i can say status equals to success that's it right save it so I'm saving the workflow the workflow is saved locally all right so our logic app workflow is ready to test now and we have the HTTP trigger which is receiving the message and then it is posting these messages or the input request to the service bus now to before I run that as I mentioned this logic app workflow is running under the azure function workspace so it means that 
the way we run the Azure function on our local environment or local uh, machine, we need a storage emulator, right, uh, to run the Azure function. Similarly, to run the logic app on the Visual Studio code, you need to have the low storage emulator. And storage emulator, you can get it when you install the Azure SDK on, on the Visual Studio code or Visual Studio. But I do not have the storage emulator. I might have installed that. But the alternate option or the best option you have is to install one extension. Anyways, the storage emulator is deprecated on Microsoft website. So now if I go to the extension, you can see that I have the extension called the Azurite. And this is the extension which provides the storage emulation capabilities for the storage service bus queue topic so it was table, queue, and block service. As you can see that as I've already installed on my status bar of the Visual Studio code, I'm getting these three services. If I click here, these three services will be started. Now, I don't want to start those services here in this particular instance, because if I'm going to start these services by clicking here, these will create number of folders and the files here on this Visual Studio project which will create unnecessary confusion. And I might by mistakenly check in these files as well. So what I usually do is I prefer to create or to create a separate dedicated folder, uh, like a run folder I have created here. And here in this run folder, I I am running my as you write by pressing the F1, you can type in as you write and call and start and that will start the Azure write and simply if you would like to close it you can press close uh, or type in close command and it will close the Azure write as well so as you can see that when i started the when i have started the Azure write basically it has created number of files and now whenever i'm going to run any azure uh, function project or logic app project so all my logs uh, which requires to go into the uh, local storage emulator will be added to these blob queues or table.json files. I'll show you in a moment. Now I will go back to the, I'll go back to the project here. Now, of course, this is a HTTP endpoint. So I need to have the HTTP URL for, to run this particular uh, endpoint from the browser or from the postman. To do that, first of all, I need to start the logic app. I can press F5 or I can click here on the run option and start running the debug option that will start the run for my logic app. So starting the task, it's generating the uh, debug symbol, which it hasn't found. I think there is some issue at my machine to load the debug symbol, which is okay. So it has executed the function host start file. Similarly, if I go to this debug option, I can see that I uh, the debug run option is attached to the node.net function type. So if you have the issues like me, as you can see right, right now, the uh, Azure function is not starting or my logic app is not starting or it's taking so much of time to start, then I have a trick for this which I can show you. I don't know if that will work on your machine or not but let me just wait for this to completely start and then I'll show you. Now this has started but it has took it took quite a bit of time. Now let me show you what next I need to do to get the URL. To get any URL you click here on the logic app overview section. This is the URL, but if I simply try and run this URL, this will not work. So ultimately what I need is I need this URL because this URL has invoked then API version and it also has some uh, some kind of authentication token, which is this token uh, at the last appended this token so that it runs on my local machine. Without that, if I run, then it will fail. So what I'll do is I'll click here on this URL, which is this one. And you can see that with this URL, I'm going to choose a method type as a post, and then I'm using this particular sample JSON to post a message. Let me try and run for the very first time. It might take a time. 
as you can see that the uh, call has been succeeded and in our workflow we have mentioned that the status equal to success so we've got that now if i validate the workflow whether it is succeeded or not i'll go to the workflow and here in the overview section you can see that we have a run which is which has been triggered and it has run for quite a long time which should not be the case when i run for the next time let me run that again and this time it just succeeded in six seconds which is fair time now i can simply click here on this instance which has been triggered to view what happens to this run and here are the steps so http trigger i got this particular message and i'm sending this message to this service bus and i can show you the message has been successfully posted uh, we have run two times so we should have two messages here these are the two messages which we have in this particular service bus and that has proven that we are able to run the logic app right here from our machine right as i mentioned that if i delete or the restart or stop the azure ride then i'll lose this uh, tracing of my logic app so if you'd like to keep monitoring or keep a history of this make sure that you do not lose the azure ride configuration or azure at log data which you have it on your azure at configuration okay now one thing if you look at even though my terminal is running but i do not have any debug or uh, that point it could be the reason uh, because of that uh, debug issue which i was mentioning earlier so let me fix that i'll stop that i'll go to the debug and here what i have found is when i use this uh, .NET uh, attaches in .NET function uh, at that point of time uh, it has an issue for the very first time but if i switch back to let's say javascript and now if i try to run then hopefully it will work fine so let me try that if i stop debugging and then i'll run start again let's see if it loads the uh, debug point just keep on asking me to uh, sign into Azure, which I don't want to do it right now. As you can see that, as I mentioned, uh, this time as it has successfully uh, loaded my debug point, or, or at least I know whether my workflow is working or not right here from this particular section. Let me test again. And this has run in just a couple of milliseconds. And message is posted again. So we've got third message now. Okay, so this has this is another trick which you can use with your Visual Studio code. So as soon as I switch to the JavaScript debug terminal, I can see I have the uh, logs available and function is starting soon and I should be able to test that the way I was doing it earlier. Uh, this is a little bit weird. I'm, I'm getting uh, pop up again and again for signing it to Azure, but that's okay. That's it in this demonstration. You can do quite a lot of things with the Visual Studio Code and Logic App right here on your local station. I'm also exploring so many other options, uh, but I just wanted to have a quick overview of using the Visual Studio Code with the Logic App uh, with, with you guys. As and when I have some other updates related to the Visual Studio Code I or I have some other findings, I'll keep posting related to these changes or my uh, or my understanding on these tools or the connectivity point of view. I hope you have found this useful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.